The present and the future of aviation explained in Fly, in partnership with Eurocontrol. The impact of aviation on the environment doesn't just disturb the peace and quiet of the countryside, it's also putting the future of the planet at risk. People around Manchester Airport in England know the problem very well. They've been dealing with noise since the early years of aviation, and Manchester International is now the biggest UK airport outside the London area. I suppose the, the most direct effect is on the people that are under the flight path. In terms of numbers, um, I would suggest it's probably somewhere in the region of a couple of thousand people, um, which doesn't sound a huge number, but to those people, it's a, it's a major impact on them. And if you live under a flight path, as I do, it does have an, have an effect, although to, to an element you get used to it. But when you get visitors coming to your house that aren't used to it, then you certainly do... They, they pick up on it straight away, saying, there's another aeroplane, there's another aeroplane, whereas we've just lived with it. With the construction of a second new runway at the end of the 1990s, local communities negotiated an environment programme with the authorities to mitigate the negative effects of increased traffic. The result was a green chart for a 24.5 million euro mitigation package which includes planting six new trees for every one removed, providing two ponds for every one lost, and creating new areas of wildflower grassland and woodland right beside the new runway. The airport operates a system to control noise that checks every aircraft within 30 kilometres of the runways. It automatically registers breaches of noise limits at the network of noise monitoring stations. And in case of breaches... Where an aircraft on departure does exceed our published maximum limit, then we will contact the airline and ask them initially if they have any explanation, if there were any mitigating or unusual circumstances as to why this might have happened. If there aren't, then we do reserve the right to apply a financial penalty to the operator of the airline and that the size of that penalty is on a scale according to just how much he has exceeded the maximum level by. The way that I can probably best describe our strategy is the money from those fines goes into something called a community trust fund. We put that money back into the local communities around Manchester who've suffered from the excessive noise. And we've just celebrated the 10th anniversary of that community trust fund. Uh, we've given £2 million to over 700 projects in the local communities, in the people affected by our operations, and that's been partly funded by our noise fines and our environmental charges. Manchester is one of the first European airports to introduce, in cooperation with the National Air Navigation Operator and Eurocontrol, the continuous descent approach, a new win-win solution to approach the runway that ensures less noise and less fuel consumption. In simple terms, it's like turning stairs into a slide. The aircraft starts its descent later and goes directly towards the runway, eliminating the stepped approach, which needs more engine thrust. It can save from 50 to 150 kilos of fuel per landing, and it's quieter. On a traditional approach, it was more pilot control, and so pilot is going to define the top of descent, how it's going to manage descent, versus the new system, the continuous descent approach, where it is more ground control by the ground radar. The continuous descent approach is designed to have an idle continuous descent, which means that you're going to burn less fuel, so it's going to be a great saving for the company, for the planet also else you're going to have less emission of gases and also less noise emission. Greenhouse emissions are a new challenge, also for aviation. The European Commission has decided to incorporate aviation in the European Union Emissions Trading Scheme in two phases between 2011 and 12. Currently, air transport's responsible for around 2% of carbon dioxide emissions. 
A short-haul return flight, for example, between Paris and Amsterdam emits 15 tonnes of CO2. A medium-haul one, say Munich to Palma de Mallorca, 30 tonnes of CO2. In 2006, European flights produced 224 million tonnes of CO2. Even condensation trails, the white lines which decorate a blue sky after the passage of aircraft are thought to have a global warming effect when they trigger the formation of high altitude clouds. Air traffic management has a major role to play in environmental improvements, as experts of Eurocontrol, the European Organization for Safety and Air Navigation, explain. This graph tries to depict the, uh, the amount of emissions, CO2 emissions uh, during the day. Uh, and it is clear that the more you have traffic at the different flight levels, you can see the different type of emissions. All this is used for us in our planning, in our design of the airspace network. In 2007, this is the situation that we have as regards CO2 emissions. And we're talking about 700,000 tons of, uh, of CO2. If we don't do anything to reduce, by 2015, we can see a figure which goes up much more. It's around 1,250,000 uh, tons of uh, CO2 emissions. Our question has always been, what can we do to reduce delay? Now we answer two questions. What can we do to reduce delay? What can we do to improve flight efficiency? Eurocontrol has its own environment domain manager. Andrew Watt explains the link between efficiency and environmental protection. Our challenge is by 2020 to reduce emissions by 10% through air traffic management measures. We have a number of things underway which will help towards that goal. We are currently working for the future to improve the efficiency of airports through air traffic management measures by reducing taxi times, by having a better sequencing of aircraft towards the runway and this in itself will also reduce fuel burn and we have a performance target to re reduce the route length per flight on average by two kilometres per year, every year out to 2013. And what about the airlines? What are they doing in the environmental field? Is there any risk of a ticket price increase to try and solve the environmental problems? European airlines have uh, always taken their environmental responsibility seriously. Uh, they are buying the newest state-of-the-art fleet uh, aircraft. They are in fleet renewal programs. Individual carriers have things called green landing programs where the cockpit crews are instructed to and develop ways and means of being even more efficient than they have ever been before. Individual airlines have introduced so-called carbon offset programs. So airlines are doing an awful lot to reduce emissions. The way in which the ticket prices increases is difficult to foresee for anyone, but I would presume that as the costs go up, so will the ticket prices. There is no single solution or magic formula to reduce greenhouse emissions. Only with a long sequence of measures will it be possible to make air transportation more environmentally friendly.